I want to talk today about uh, the IPEF that Biden has announced yesterday on his trip to Asia, an economic framework of the US partnering with a number of Asian states, uh, including Japan and Southeast Asia, most of Southeast Asia, not all of them. Um, again, as usual, based on political um, uh, relations, um, you could say on ideological relations, some countries were excluded or are excluded from the proposal. But let me be fair. I want to start with uh, the positive part uh, from the US perspective. What I think Biden has got right or the Biden administration have got right is the approach to focus on the economy. Because um, just to simply say Southeast Asian nations are worried about China, uh, the big neighbor in the north, and um, they have a strained relationship because of conflicting claims, for example, in the South China Sea or because of historical reasons. And then to say the US has the biggest army in the world and is a superpower, so they should uh, do a military alliance with uh, the US. That definitely is too short uh, way of looking at it, uh, too short-sighted. Um, why? Because for one, look at Japan, they already do have a military alliance with the US, but at the same time, they still have excellent uh, relations with China in terms of the economy. Japan produces a lot of its industrial output in factories in China. Uh, Japan's uh, investment in China has always been an important driver for the economic development of China. And uh, China and Japan, they have a lot of trade in both uh, directions. Same for the Southeast Asian nations. Actually, all of them have China as their biggest trading partner. So um, even if they were to agree to a military alliance with the US, it could not mean that they would just stop uh, trading and having a close relationship with China. And also diplomatically, China never um, asks any country to uh, end their relationship with the US or like to, to not have good relations with the US. China is open to do trade exactly without any ideological limitations. So whatever you do elsewhere, as long as you do fair uh, uh, reciprocal trade with China, China will do trade with you. And that's always been the strength of China in, in initiatives like the Belt and Road. So. Um, in that respect, if the US wants to contain China and if the US wants to improve their relationship with Southeast Asia or to, to have a better um, influence on countries in Southeast Asia, it's definitely the right way to focus on economic partnerships. So that's the thing where I think the Biden administration has got it right. However, the first obvious huge question mark is why yet another framework? There's already the CPTPP, which originally was the TPP that Obama has uh, invoked and, and started as an initiative, but then Trump pulled out. And then Japan came and said, well, we want to do it anyways because it's a good idea. Uh, so they added the CP in front of it and made it CPTPP. And now, uh, although it was also invented as a way to have an economic um, framework that excludes China, now China is actually applying to join the CPTPP. And we'll see what happens there. But um, definitely the US is out. And um, the question is, of course, why yet another one instead of reapplying to join again? I'm sure Japan would be happy. I'm sure the others uh, in the CPTPP would also be willing to accept the US again. And what I've read uh, on CNN is that it's purely internal politics inside the US. Uh, the US lawmakers wouldn't like that. And so Biden's hand, hands are bound, even though he still controls a majority in, in uh, both uh, chambers of parliament in the US. He seems incapable of pushing through uh, proposals that he deems important, which then, of course, uh, Southeast Asian nations will be very wary. Uh, if even in power uh, with a majority in parliament, the US is not, uh, or the US president is not able to push through a, a proposal that the US had originally supported, then how stable, how reliable is this IPEF? And I think uh, Southeast Asians, 
again, they're generally very uh, inclusive. They're very open to work with everyone. They've uh, always been non-aligned, also in the Cold War in the past. So um, they won't say no to IPEF, but they definitely would be very hesitant if joining IPEF meant saying no to China. As long as they can do both, I'm sure they will do both. Why shouldn't they? There's no reason not to. But as soon as it means like you have to antagonize China, I think there's just no reason why the Southeast Asian nations should risk that because economically China is super important to them. And as a comparison, think of countries like Turkey or North African countries working with Europe. Like historically, Europe has colonized all of them. Europe has uh, fought horrible wars in most of them. So there's a lot of historic and, and cultural and, and other um, negative emotions still around. But in terms of the economy, any of those countries would just be stupid not to do trade with Europe because Europe has the customers, it has the markets, it has the money. Uh, so it helps them to develop. Uh, and that's why Turkey or North Africa, they wouldn't stop working with Europe on ideological reasons, even if there's tension on, on, on various fields. But economically, it just doesn't make sense not to work with Europe. Same for Southeast Asia and China. Some of them have good relations. Some of them have tensions. But economically, it just doesn't make sense not to work with the fastest developing huge market, um, ever richer China. And then last but not least, there's the RCEP to have yet another economic framework, which includes some countries that the US also doesn't like, like Myanmar, like Burma, uh, as it used to be called, uh, like Cambodia, which has a very close political relationship with China and Laos as well. So these three would be excluded by the US and by the TPP, but they're in another framework called RCEP. So there's a lot of economic frameworks already uh, promoting free trade in the region. And the RCEP is the one that China has initiated. And even if China cannot join the CPTPP, they will be in the RCEP. And um, that includes all of the Southeast Asian countries as well. So the one thing that's a big difference between the US and China is then when China proposes something and others join in, China really makes sure to follow through. China does not change a president and then stop doing something that they've been working on. And that's, I think, what's for economic cooperation, that's just, I'm sorry to say, that's the most important is reliability. China is reliable and that's what the companies, that's what corporations and the countries in Southeast Asia need in order to make long-term plans. And um, if the US, uh, you know, initiates a framework and jumps out and starts another framework while everybody knows that it might change again and the president's power in his own country is limited, that's a very uh, shaky ground to, to start building a long-term foundation of economic cooperation. So IPEF, again, I don't think it's a huge challenge for China. I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a threat or anything. Um, I also don't think, it, it, let's see if it really comes into becoming something of, of value. I am not very positive, to be honest, on the outlook of it. Let me, uh, let me hear what you think about it. Leave a comment if you like it, like, and please share this video. Thanks.